Hello mate and welcome back to Let's Code Season 4, this time it's personal. In this episode we are going to continue building on our classes. So if we look at our planning, we've done the locations class, that's good to go. The next thing we want to work on I reckon is the NPCs class. So what we're going to do is we're going to define our class and we're going to call it NPC. You can inherit from object again and we're going to close it off with a colon. Now we're going to define what happens when we initialize that class. And we're going to start off by saying self, of course. Next thing we need to do is go with name and nice name again. And the reason we do that is again, as we did yesterday, is so that we can have a Cody friendly name and then a eyeball friendly name. And we don't have to never tween shall meet. Looking at the stats that we looked at yesterday, uh, we can just copy these right across control and C and then we can swing back over to here and we can just paste those right in there what I'm going to do though is I'm going to drop the capitals I'm going to go with lowercase and last but not least there nice and easy and then we can just close that off with a colon as well so we now need to say self dot name equals name self dot nice name equals nice name self dot affection equals affection self dot love equals love self dot messages equals messages self dot location location self dot schedule equals schedule and self dot lust equals lust Brilliant. Okay, so that's our class really basically laid out. And then what we can do is we can actually set up a property which is going to define what the character's appearance is going to be on the screen. So what we'll do is we'll go add property. I'm going to spell property correctly as well. And then we're going to define the character's avatar like so. Close that off with a self, happy days. So we're gonna start off with output text equals, and we're gonna just make that an empty string. So what we wanna do at this point is we wanna pick a location. So we're gonna just say, is it gonna be in the images folder? We can say uh, characters, spell that correctly, characters, forward slash avatars, forward slash. Gonna close that off like that. Then we're going to Think about what we want our appearance to look like. So I want the person's appearance to change once they reach a certain point in the affection and love and lust values. So what we need to do is we need to come up with some way of turning those into transferable or useful information. So these are going to be, say, that ranges from 0 to 100, and then if it goes over 100, then it just kind of maxes out and stays there. So what I want to do now is I want to actually create some new properties which we can actually use in this section here. So I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna call this a property as well. And we're gonna call this one uh, love rating, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll say if self dot love is less than 25 for example return and we'll just say return one then we'll say if self dot love is less than 50 turn two if self dot love is less than 75, return three, and then we'll just have a return four at the end there. So if it's, uh, no, actually I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna have five classes. Yeah, so if self.love less than 100, return four, and then we'll have a return five at the end there like so. Nice and simple. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of that. Control C and I'm going to do the same thing for affection and lust. So control V. Control V. 
and this time we will go with affection copy that there like that and then we just and then paste that there like that that's affection rating and then lastly lust copy that Oops, a daisy. Control Z. Let's try that again. And we'll have that. Okay, so now what we've got is three properties that range from one to five based on what the affection, love, and lust ratings are. And the good reason, the good reason we can use that now is that I don't want to have to put ranges into the avatar class. These three properties do all of the calculations for us. So all we have to do is use those values in here. So what we have to do now is we need to come up with a way that we can utilize that information in here. And the best thing to do is we're going to have like so. Or failing that, we could have it so that, in fact, even better idea, what we will do is if self.love affection rating is less than let's say less than five yeah let's go with a full range so you have to maximize you have to go with one two three and four output text equals there 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 and there so we're going to give it a name and other love rating like so in fact i will go love underscore like so no that's affection goodness me that's the thing about thinking on the fly, you see, things change. You might change your mind immediately. And then we can go dot format. And then in our brackets, we need self dot name, comma, self dot name, comma. And then the last one is going to be affection self dot affection rating like so. Cool. Now we just have to, oh, we need to tab that in properly. Let's make sure that's tabbed in. Cool, we can copy this, paste it again. And this time we're going to say, if love rating is less than five. And what we'll do actually is, before I forget, we'll put the return in there and we'll return output text like so. And then we'll do the same thing here output text so what's happening here is it's going to check if the affection rating if the characters if, or if the, this character's affection rating is less than five i.e it is not maxed out then we will return this value it will look for this file and return it and then it will end that's what we will see as the property however if affection is five it will move on to the next one and we will look for love rating this time. So we'll just change this so that it's love rating. And we'll change this to underscore love underscore. And then it will return that. However, if love is also maxed out, then we will set the property to be. And this one's going to be underscore lust underscore. And we'll change this to lust rating. Cool. So the reason we're doing this rather than having like three values of having the love rating and the affection rating and the lust rating in is that we can, we would have to render way too many images for that to be effective. Because what we would have is five times five times five, which is 125 images, which is a lot. Doing it this way, we only need to render 15, which I think you'll agree is considerably less so. Either way, our character's appearance is going to be dynamic based on what their three ratings are. So that's cool. So that's that property done. We've got the lust ratings. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another list there, NPCs equals, and we're going to create a list like so. Now what we can do is in our defaults and defines, we can actually create some characters. So I'm just going to add a bit of space there. Going to add our commented out section that tells us what the properties of these characters are like so see there and then we can paste that there and then we can just say npc 
values like that. That's just a good aid memoir for us and we don't have to worry about it. What I can also do is I can actually add a hash zero there and a hash one there. And then that just reminds me if this list grows, which it inevitably will do, it means that I've got a quick reference way of knowing which item within the list this is. So kitchen is item one, my house is item two. And then as we go along, it's again, it's just a nice aid memoir to remind us of that value. So what we'll do is we'll just do NPCs dot append, and then we're going to put NPC in there with another bracket. And now we need to know its values. So the first one is name. So we'll call this one Sally like that. Sally with a small s because this is our code friendly name. And then we'll give her a better name there. We'll call her Sally with a capital S. And then all of the values other than that are going to be zero because we don't have any affection or love. Messages needs to be an empty list. Location can be an empty string for now until we need them to. We can set a schedule. Schedule is also going to be an empty list for now. And then lust is going to be zero. So there. So what we're going to put in this property here is going to be a, uh, a list of text messages that that character may have sent at the moment. That's going to be empty because the character hasn't sent any messages. And then the schedule, once we've got a list of locations and we can decide where we want this character be to be at any time of day. However, for now, their schedule is empty. So they will always be in wherever this location is, which currently is an empty string. So they're off screen. So we'll copy and paste that. Oh, no, silly me. We will copy and paste that line. Paste that. And we'll just create a whole bunch of characters. So Sally, I don't know, she could be like, um, you know, the next door neighbor kind of girl. We'll go with uh, Jenny. She can be another character. We could have a school teacher. So we could say, um, Hamilton and then her text friendly name or her eyeball friendly name will be Miss Hamilton. Miss Hamilton, she could be a bit of a, a bit of a dom, for example. She could be, you know, into that kinky stuff. So she's going to need some cucks. So let's see. Let's think of some good names for some cucks. Yeah, let's go with, say, Martin. He could be one. Let's just give this in here like so. He can be cuck number one. And let's go with, I don't know, uh, let's pick another name randomly. Uh, any ideas? Okay, let's try Arnolfo. And he can be cuck number two. Cool. Now we need some more lady characters, some actually useful people. So let's go with, uh, let's go with some old favorites, Lucy. And we can also go with Laura. Why the hell not? Oh, that's got to be a small L. And we can have another character here called, I don't know, Samantha. We could just have that shortened to Sam, but now we'll give it a Samantha. Why not? So we got some characters there that we can use further down the line and going back to our class so we can just talk through that and what we've done here. As you can see, we've got all of these properties. So they've got a, name, a code friendly name and then a person friendly name. They've got an affection, love and lust stat. They have a list of messages which we're going to populate as the game progresses. So there'll be a list of text messages that each character could send and they all send those individually at random times. They've got the location of that character, which is going to change as time progresses. And then we've got the schedule, which will be the list of locations that that individual will go to at specific times. Now, the reason I haven't filled those in right now is because they could potentially be quite long lists having somebody have a different location five or six or seven times a day isn't a problem but obviously they're, if they're a school girl for example they're not going to go to school on a Saturday and Sunday so you need to provide seven days a week's worth of location so I think you can find that's a pretty long-winded way of doing it but it's also the most accurate way of doing it so we just won't fill those values in right now and then we've got our NPCs list which we've called for within our init python block 
Okay, guys, I think that about covers it for today's class. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, until I see you again, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.